This summer, the obvious choice was really underscored by the impending death of the Queen of England. As we now see after the coronation of Charles III, that there's a worldwide interest in the British monarchy. We selected Vaughan Williams because it was timely and uh, appropriate, especially the thinking about what it means to say one's English when one watches the crowds around the coronation and people draped in, you know, in the British flag. And uh, what is the flag about? Is it a, a flag for a dynasty and a monarchy? Uh, is it a flag for Little England, or just England? Or is it a flag for Britain, which would include Scotland and Wales and Northern Ireland? Is it a flag of the empire, which included India and Africa and Australia and Canada? People who love things English um, will be thrilled by this festival. Uh, it also explores the limits of the simplification of English musical history, <clears throat> that there was Purcell and then there was Elgar and somewhere in between Gilbert and Sullivan appear. I mean, that's about the level of what most people think about when they think about English music. After Sir Edward Elgar, the most important composer of the 20th century, until probably Benjamin Britten, was Ray Vaughan Williams. So, and Vaughan Williams is in the category of overlooked composer. So Vaughan Williams was a kind of modern composer of his own kind. People compare him often to Sibelius or in America to Samuel Barber. And it was a person who thought, well, if I've tried modern music, it doesn't have to sound uh, the way a factory sounds, or it doesn't have to sound the way a modern street sounds. He was really interested in how to bring the consciousness of the past into the politics and culture of the present. We have this debate in the United States. There's a big debate which has arisen to the level of national politics about how we tell the story of our own country. And um, England has somewhat the same problem. Um, musicians quarreled as to what, what was English. And Vaughan Williams became very interested in the English folk song. The way Bartok was interested in the Hungarian folk song, or Szymanowski in the Polish folk song. When one looks at sort of this increasingly diverse community, you want to ask, what's, what do we have in common? Now, it can be something symbolic like the monarchy, but it also can be something, the songs we sing, and the hymns we, we pray with in church. Can I make it part of the fabric of what I think modern England? should be, or what kind of culture should prevail in modern England? How can I contribute to it? So he begins to write music that is also used by people in this modern community. He conducted an amateur choir, and he gave concerts uh, as a conductor. Um, he wrote explicitly for amateur players, for music in the home. Uh, he believed music was a cultural force of community at a time when that community was in danger of breaking apart. There are all kinds of agendas in looking to document the, our original music. What was our original music? What did it sound like? Why did people do it? Uh, what was its point? Especially it was detached from religion. Von Williams was involved um, as somewhat of an outsider in the struggles over the nature of the liturgy and the theology of the Anglican Communion. For the first time, we're having a set of concerts not here on the campus, but in the Church of the Messiah, uh, an appropriately Episcopal church um, in Rhinebeck, uh, which has a newly restored and wonderful organ and is also air conditioned a non-trivial uh, asset for a church. This will be a chance for audiences to hear a lot of music that isn't performed. So the Barn Festival has renewed energy because when we got started, 
there were people out there waiting for composers and works that they knew about or read about or maybe heard once, for which there was probably not a recording. And people traveled from long distances to hear just one piece. Thank you.